So wonderful. So thank you all for joining me today on Friday. Uh, my name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. So I'm very thrilled to be um, back here with you again. Uh, I was in on Wednesday, if you were with me just two days ago, talking about the fabulous sergers, which I will be again. There is a serger hidden underneath all of this. Maybe you're besotten with my beautiful assistant, Rebecca. She has joined me on a couple of my uh, assignments as I visited the various uh, Genome dealers. You know, often I'm driving around, so she's my passenger, so then I can use the uh, carpool lane. So it's wonderful. <laughs> and she's a great model too, you know. Uh, I don't have to pay her much, and she doesn't give me much feedback, so that's wonderful. So yes, thank you very much for joining me today. And then yes, we're gonna be talking about using some decorative threads on your serger. And uh, you know, the sergers allow us to really experiment and really have some fun. They're not just for finishing the edges of your garments, um, kind of like they used to be. So I hope you can see here, I know it's a little hard um, on this white piece of paper and my big shop light overhead, but I hope you can see some of these threads. Uh, they're across the top here of my machine, just as an example. Um, this is our regular, this black thread is our regular arrow lock Madeira thread uh, that I use pretty much for most of my surging, uh, just regular polyester serger thread. So that's the black here. So that's our typical serger thread we would use in our loopers and even our needles. Uh, this blue thread is the arrow flock thread. And you may be able to tell that it's a little thicker. It's got a little more texture. I used this on the on the Wednesdays uh, live when I was doing a rolled hem because this really gives great coverage. This is a woolly poly. It's polyester thread, just as the same as this thread. But again, it's got a uh, better loft, so it's better for coverage. So now, if you are not able to tune in live or join the live lates, you can always go back and scroll through the Genome Sewing Machine Facebook page or uh, check out the, the videos tab and then all the other videos are there. Um, so that's good. Now, this is our Iris uh, polyester embroidery thread, whoops, that I use a lot. Uh, it's got beautiful bright colors. So even though it's embroidery thread, why not use it in your loopers especially? Now the loopers on a serger are great because they go around, the thread goes around your fabric. It doesn't go through it when you're using the loopers. So this is why you're able to use a lot of uh, heavier decorative threads um, maybe more fine threads as well, but because they don't go through the fabric. So that's polyester embroidery thread, but why not use it in your serger? This, believe it or not, is wool. It is a 12 weight wool. So thread is very peculiar. The lower the number, the thicker the thread. The higher the number, the thinner the thread. To me, it should be the other way around, but who am I? So this is 12 weight and this is wool, so this would be uh, great for like hand sewing a uh, blanket stitch, I think would be beautiful, any of that wool applique. Uh, but I can use this in my loopers for sure. I could even use this in the needle as well. Um, so that's an alternative. Uh, this is this, oh, I hope you can pick up the sparkle. It's called Glamour, and it certainly is very glamorous. It is this rayon metallic thread. Uh, so again, very beautiful to use in your looper because it um, adds a lot of glitz and glamour. Now, this one may be a little tricky to see. This is the Madeira Metallic Embroidery Thread. I love this in the embroidery thread. You know, all metallics are not created equal. And certainly the metallics of 25 years ago, oh, throw them out. Uh, the metallics now are way better. Particularly, I love this Madeira Metallic uh, Silver that I use in my embroidery machine a lot. It really behaves beautifully. So maybe use this in the loopers, or you could even use this in your needle. You know, a lot of the times when we're using these decorative thread, we're not holding the garment together. The garment would already be like sewn together. I would use like regular sewing thread for that or like regular serger thread for that. And then these I would generally stick to using in the looper, or I would use them in the needle when I don't have to like hold a garment together because I'd want to make sure that the thread is strong enough to, to hold the garment together. Um, and then this thread, this may be very difficult for you to see. This is a hundred weight, uh, very fine. Oh, it doesn't even want to stay. 
I'll put it here. <laughs> it's very fine. Uh, this is the Invisifil. It's a hundred weight, so it's really, really fine to see. So maybe if you're making uh, like lingerie or some kind of like heirloom baptismal gown or something, and you want really delicate thread, that yes, you could use this in your serger as well. But there may be some considerations that while you're using some of these heavier or lighter threads than just your average serger thread, for example. So on this 100 weight thread, um, it just wants to puddle and pool everywhere. You may find if you use this in your sewing machine that you're nodding your head and saying yes, that as I take this off the spool, it wants to like kind of puddle around. So this is why uh, our sergers, you know, I think pretty much all Janome sergers come with these nets. And if not, if you've lost them perhaps or damaged them, whichever, uh, they're available separately from your Janome dealer. So by having these nets around your thread and then the thread comes up the top, uh, that really helps control the speed in which the thread comes off and helps uh, prevent some of that puddling around the bottom of the spool. Uh, I also like specifically for the sergers, then they also come with these little um, cone spool adapters that if you use like a really big uh, cone of thread and most serger uh, cones, you know, are quite large, then then these are great to use uh, to help prevent the cones from spinning around. But I like putting them on my spool holder in the back, particularly when I'm using uh, smaller spools of thread. I don't always have to use big cones of thread. So I put this on my spool holder at the back and then I put my little spool of thread on top of it. So that way the big spool pin that's on the back of this holder, uh, my thread isn't going to wind around it as it comes off the spool. Are there special needles for different thicker or thinner threads? Well, in your serger, this convenient, uh, I believe most sergers have this little thing. Conveniently, I've got a little um, reminder that I use uh, size 11 to 14 needle in my serger is the ideal guide. So on um, this like Invisifil, for example, I would use a size 11 because it's much smaller. But um, in these bigger um, like size uh, 12, uh, this 12 weight wool, then yes, I would use a 14 on that because then the eye would be bigger. So yes. Can you demonstrate the correct way to apply the thread net? Oh, sure. Yes, absolutely. So what I find easiest is I turn it upside down. So if this is my, uh, this is how my thread is coming up off the spool, that I turn the spool over and then I'm going to put the thread net over it like that. So then now when I invert it, then it's coming off the spool the correct way. And then if I'm using like one of these spools, for example, um, these mini king spools, then I'll even go so far and I'll tuck it. I don't have to do this, but I usually like kind of tuck it under like that. And then I'll put it on my spool pin, like just so then it keeps it nice and neat. But you don't have to do that just to plop it on there is fine. So yeah, they really work well. And again, that it helps control some of that uh, puddling. So let me get rid of that. So, oh, and let me get rid of that so it doesn't fall. Uh, I can get rid of this metallic. Now, when it comes to things like these uh, thicker thread or, or even the thinner threads too, sometimes as you put them on your spool holder, and now typically when I, I thread the serger, I just put it in this little guide up here, it goes into that guide and then I'll come down to the machine guide. But these little hole, the holes that are in each of the thread guys here are for if you find with some of these decorative threads, particularly the lighter weight threads, as you're surging along, they might like bounce right out of that uh, thread guide. So in order to alleviate that, after you put the thread through the little notch, just like that, I hope you all can see okay. Uh, then I come back and thread through, thread through that little hole. So my thread forms this little curl. So then that way, no matter how speed, you know, our sergers will go like 16, 1800 stitches a minute, super fast. So no matter how fast I'm going, and if this thread is dancing all around, because I've threaded it through that little hole, it's not gonna come out of that guide. 
Uh, conversely, I can also take it out entirely. And I don't have to go through this groove up here at the top. I can just go, whoops, I can just go through that hole there as well. So that way, again, I know no matter how uh, fine and fiddly my thread is, how wiry some of the elast or the uh, metallic threads are quite wiry and they may, again, jump out of that thread guide. So by putting it through that little hole, you're not going to have any problems. So then I can get rid of this. Um, do the, net, uh, the thread nets reduce breakage of metallic thread? Yes. Now, this is one reason why I love this Madeira Metallics because I really don't have thread breakage, even when I embroider and even using it. I've used it a few times on my serger. I haven't really had any trouble at all. Now, typically when I'm embroidering and when I'm using decorative threads on the serger, even though the machines can sew super fast, I generally try to ease off, even though I can be a speed demon. Uh, but I do ease off a little bit because, again, these uh, decorative threads can be a little more um, finicky. So uh, you don't have to sew at top speed. So I find that helps reduce breakage. Uh, but yes, the thread nets are good because then they're, they're helping the thread um, not get caught around the spool itself. And then they kind of slow down the delivery off the spool so they're not going to uh, feed too quickly and again jump around. So that does help. So when, oh, let me get rid of that. I guess I can get rid of all of these for right now. There's so much to talk about. I got to make sure I remember how to do it all. So when we come to thread some of these thicker threads in particular, this is that 12 weight thread. So if you, and we've got the fabulous AT2000D. This is our air thread serger. And again, this Madeira um, Aeroflock, this works wonderful in the, uh, air threading chamber when I prime that lever up and down to shoot the thread through, it works fine, no problem. Now some of your heavier threads, more textured threads, maybe instead of priming that lever like just once, you may have to do it two or three times to kind of shoot it through. But if you're finding the, the thread really does not want to go through that air threading chamber, or if it's very uh, textured like this uh, uh, flossy um, glitter. This is just called, oh, again, this is another Glamour by Madeira. Uh, that's very textured. So instead of struggling a little bit to go through that air thread chamber, I'll just not even use it. Nothing is wrong with the air thread chamber. Nothing is wrong with the machine. It just means maybe your thread's a little too fine to go through, or maybe it's a little too heavy to go through for the air to carry it. So because of that, Janome always thinks of everything. Uh, can you see this little looper threader pack? It comes in your accessory box of your AT2000D. Again, this is something most people tell me when I tell them about this. Oh, I didn't even know that was there. Yes, it's wonderful. You typically don't need to use these. If you use regular serger thread in this Madeira Aeroflock, like fine, you don't need to use these at all. But these looper threaders are really handy to use when you're using this thicker, heavier, or even more fine thread that it's harder to get through all those thread guys, or, or in this case, the air threading chamber. Uh, now these looper threaders are also available separately. What? Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Oh, you're excited because they're available separately. Yes, because um, any of, even if you don't have this fancy, beautiful uh, air thread serger, Although again, why not? <laughs> I think it's amazing. But even if you don't, you just have a regular serger, that great, you can still use your looper threaders in and around all your thread guides as normal because it's a very flexible wire and it really um, helps you get those thicker threads through. Now, if you can, this may be hard to see because it is such a thin wire, cast your eye down here. This is the wire. If any of you have had to snake a drain before, <laughs> uh, or snake a toilet, uh, this is the same kind of thing. It is a thin wire. One end has a loop and the other end is just a, a flat blunt end. And what you do, you if, if you've got the air thread serger, the AT2000D, lock your serger as usual, as if you're threading. And then what you will do so it's all locked, the air threading chambers are uh, engaged. And then what you will do is then you gently start pushing this wire 
down through all this, again, it's like a snake going through a drain, all through the air threading chamber, and it comes out, in this case, it's through the upper looper. So it's coming out the upper looper slot. Can you all see that? Again, this is where I love that we've got these on, on video. So if you can't see now, then maybe go back and review this afterward and see if you can like zoom in. Um, Joe is trying to get in really close, but then again, we get that weird um, autofocus that sometimes makes it all blurry. But so when you put this in, you would put this through either looper, lower looper and upper looper, whichever. And then even if you didn't have, again, the air threading uh, capability, you could still use this flexible wire to get in and around all your thread guides. So once I get that through and down close to that hole, here's my 12 weight wool, for example, I'm going to just thread that through that big eye in the looper threader like that. And actually, ooh, I should always say, Rebecca's conveniently holding my manual. Always consult your machine manual, uh, particularly how to use some of these decorative threads and particularly how to use these looper threaders. Uh, the manual recommends that we use these looper threaders and I think it's ooh, maybe some 60 weight thread and we do a little loop like this and then we pull it through the air threading chambers uh, as a means to clean. So again, always consult your manual. But after I make a big loop here, so I've got my my uh, 12 weight thread threaded as always, it's down, my foot is up, so it's gonna go through the uh, tensions. And then I'm just gonna gently pull over here on the wire, and it's gonna pull my thread all the way through my upper looper. And again, I can do this on the lower looper as well, so it really works really, really well. So once I get this uncurled, maybe you, I don't know, would it be easier if I did that up against that? It's so thin because it, again, it snakes right through the tensions. And again, um, whoops, it's got a little, um, a little loop in the, in the top. So then that's what you uh, leave out. So your thread will go through that loop and then at the bottom, it is just a blunt end. So then that's what you're going to um, stick down into your loopers to thread them. So they really, really work well. They come with a, a package of two. And then um, again, you can get them separately as well. So they're, they're really handy to use. So there it's threaded. It's beautiful. So I don't need to try to use my air threading at all. Now I'm going to just clip that thread because I don't need it for what we're later going to do too. And I'll just get rid of that. Now, when I'm going to do my needle thread in thicker thread, or maybe really fine thread, uh, in this case, I've got a 12 weight as well, or at least I think it's a 12 weight. It doesn't really say, but I think it's a 12 weight. Um, thicker like floss uh, to use in the needle. Uh, then we've got built-in needle threaders to the AT2000D. But again, um, the needle threaders are only designed for a certain amount of threads. They can't accommodate every single thread out there on the market. Now, our Janome needle threaders are constructed around our Janome needles. So we know then using Janome needles, then the, the eye of that needle lines up perfectly with the little wire that comes through the needle threader. So when people say, oh, my needle threader doesn't work, well, maybe if you're using a different brand of needle, the eye of the needle may not line up with that wire that comes through, or maybe the size of your needle, if you're using a really fine needle, let's say a size eight, uh, that's a really small hole. So maybe that's too small for the wire to come through and then that little lasso of thread to be pulled through. So in which case uh, it's not your machine. Generally people, oh, it doesn't work. It's just you're using like the wrong needle or the wrong thread combination. If you're using some of these thicker, heavier threads, remember that wire has to come through the needle, lasso the, the thread around it. So then two thicknesses of thread is, uh, is coming through that needle. So it may be a little challenging to do that. So instead, maybe with this 12 weight, my needle threaders 
could work fine, no problem. Um, I generally kind of err on the side of caution. So instead of using the needle threaders built into the machine, I can also use the needle threader that comes in a separate blister pack for a couple of bucks, get it from your Genome dealer. Uh, our CPX2000, for example, comes with this, um, but it's a really cool little tool because half of it is a holder for your needle. So when you're uh, putting in a new needle, taking out a needle, so half of it holds your needle. But the other half of it, I will use this thread. It'll be hard for Joe to see, so I'll try to do a little... Um, demo here. There are two arrows. Can you see those two arrows? There's an arrow on this side and then there's an arrow on the back side. So it doesn't matter which arrow goes up, but you want the arrows like facing you. And then your thread goes right across, right across. There's little grooves in the side of that. So your thread goes right across. And then when you push this down against your needle, do you see that uh, that blue thread of that Madeira error lock in this. Whoops, let me get it back in there. So can, I hope you can see, I know it's so little, that's why I thought I could better show it here than at the machine. But then that way, that little wire is going to push through the eye of your needle and thread the needle for you. So this is a really cool tool to have, again, for when your thread is a little, uh, again, thicker and may not go through the eye of the needle as well with the needle threader. This is very fine and very easy to do. And then there's even a little hook on the end of it, which is cool. And then that helps you, once you get your thread uh, threaded through the eye of the needle, there's a little loop. And then you use this little hook and you pull it through. So it works really, really well. So, and again, not every serger has these fabulous uh, built-in threaders. So then you can get a threader like that really helps. And again, especially helps to um, thread, you know, more finicky uh, threads. So that is good. Now, the uh, kind of last thing I guess I'm going to be doing, or the main thing is when to use these decorative threads. Well, my fabulous model Rebecca is uh, wearing this beautiful scarf and I will bring up this one too. And what this is, is a blanket stitch done on the serger, but it's done using, in this case, I used some metallic thread in the loopers as well as in the needle. And you use a heavier thread in the needle. And in this case, it's, uh, I believe a size 12. So a really heavy thread in the needle. And then you use, again, any of your fancy, like glitzy threads if you want, or again, it could be this, this wool, uh, 12 weight wool. Um, and then you use a water soluble stabilizer, which I will show you how to do this in just a minute. And then it produces this very cool serger blanket stitch. So yes, you could take the time to do this by hand. Yes, you could do it on your domestic sewing machine, but how fun to do it on your serger, super fast and easy. And although, again, we're, we're in much nicer weather now, uh, but to think how quick is this to make this scarf and then you're already set for, again, those cooler nights or you're certainly all set up for next winter and everybody's Christmas gifts. So um, I need to set up my machine in certain ways in order to do this serger blanket stitch. How am I doing on time? I don't want to take too much time. If you can let me know. Oh, okay. Fantastic. I don't want to keep you all forever, but uh, to set up this serger blanket stitch, uh, I've got, uh, it's just a regular stitch. It's on R uh, for, or it's on S for standard, not rolled hem like I did on Wednesday. So I've threaded my needle with this uh, 12 weight thread, but I've completely bypassed the tension. I'm using the left needle. I've removed the right one and tightened that screw, always tighten that screw. So I'm using the left needle. So over my left tension, I don't want any tension on this thicker, heavier thread in the needle. So I've uh, taped it completely so I can't get uh, any tension at all. Now, yes, I could turn the dial to zero and that would close the tension discs. But even then, sometimes some of these slicker threads can work their way through. So by putting a piece of tape over it, there is no tension on this thread whatsoever. 
Then I'm going to bypass my right needle. I'm not going to use that at all. I'm not going to use my upper looper. And if you were with me on Wednesday, or again, you can go back to review that when I did a two thread narrow rolled hem, I'm going to do much the same now in that I'm not going to use my upper looper. I'm going to use the spreader that is attached here to the, the post of the upper looper on the AT2000D. Now, some of our other machines, um, there's a, some of our other sergers have a secondary piece that you would attach to the post of the upper looper. And it's got a little wire that will go plug into the hole of that upper looper. And it's gonna trick the machine into thinking it's threaded. So this uh, piece is called a spreader, but think of it as a converter. You're converting your serger from a four, three thread down to a two. Now again, consult your manual because not all sergers will have this either attached or included in your accessory box. Not every serger is able to go down to a two thread. Uh, now in your accessory box is this uh, little tool that kind of looks like our needle threader in that I can hold my needle there, but then I've got this little post here that I can stick into that hole of the spreader and then swing it over. And then there's a little hook there and I'm gonna lock that into the hole of the upper looper. So again, it, it tricks the machine into thinking it's threaded. And then in my lower looper here, I sometimes uh, just do this regular tension, which is set at three. But again, you're always going to experiment and see based on your threads, you may be either loosening tension or tightening tension based on, again, the thickness of your thread and your fabric. So always do some samples. So of this serger blanket stitch, most of the time I'm at three, but I did some samples and I thought this, this particular thread works better if I tighten my lower looper. And by having my no tension on my needle and more tension on my lower looper, if this were my needle or my upper looper and this is my lower looper, by having more tension on my lower looper, I'm pulling that thread more to the back side. So that's why I, I tightened that up. And then over here at the side, my stitch length, normally I surge at about a two and a half or a three, but this I want a really long stitch. So I've uh, increased, increased it to the max all the way up to five. So it's a nice long stitch. So now I should be good to go. So I can close this up. That wonderful thing about the AT2000D, uh, it won't work with the covers open. It's a safety feature that the covers have to be closed in order for it to work. So that's a, that's a good thing. So here, I'm just going to use this fleece, but it could be at any fabric, but I found this uh, serger blanket stitch really works out well on thicker wool or fleece. Um, again, a great uh, project for a scarf. Now, the secret is water-soluble stabilizer, and I absolutely love this. Uh, now, particularly a thicker kind will work better. You really want good stability for the stabilizer because you're going to like pull on this to create this serger blanket stitch. But if you have a, a thinner water soluble stabilizer, you can just double it up. If it's, you know, one layer like that, just fold it in half. And actually I would do it this way, put the cut edges together. So that way, when you surge here, you've got the bulk of your uh, water soluble stabilizer here. So you're not cutting into that fold. So you can do that. And where that came from, I mention it all the time on my fabulous Madeira Stabilizer starter pack. And again, it's very convenient with the um, booklet to tell you and to explain more how and when to use all of these. But there's a couple of different kinds of each stabilizer, um, fusible and um, tear away and water soluble, a couple of different examples. So it's nice to be able to have a pack like this to test out what really works best for you. So when I do my serger blanket stitch, I'm going to just take a, a longer piece of water soluble stabilizer. I do have my knife blade up. I prefer to actually trim off the edges. So I'm just going to start to get my stabilizer anchored. Then I'm going to take my piece and put it right up against the needle. So the water soluble stabilizer is on top of my fleece in this case. Now on um, 
the Wednesday episode that I did just the other day and when I talked about doing a rolled hem, a narrow rolled hem, that would also be a great time to use in your upper looper or lower looper in this case if you're using that narrow two thread and you're bypassing the upper looper. Use the decorative thread in your lower looper and how beautiful of a rolled hem that would look. And then also in that um, that uh, presentation then I talked about again water soluble stabilizer. If your uh, decorative threads are not really behaving as well as you would like uh, by adding particularly if you're trying to use them on really thin fabrics you know like chiffon or organdy or something by by putting the water soluble stabilizer and doing your serge or stitch whatever it happened to be will just add a little more body and stability to that fabric so then the the thread will show better uh, so in our serger blanket stitch then, there it is, looking beautiful. But now I'm going to use this water-soluble stabilizer as like a hinge and open this up. And this is why it needs to be very stable or again use two pieces. Because now I'm going to pull, this is my needle thread, is that light white floss. Right now I see more of my uh, looper, my lower looper is the blue. But now when I open this up on my water soluble stabilizer, pulling it over to the right, there I see more of my needle thread, which is like that floss. And by supporting my finger underneath the stitch there, the row of stitches, and then I pull, because I don't want this stabilizer to pull off too quickly. I want to make sure that I really pull it to the right, and that's what exposes what looks like the the blanket stitch. So after I get that all pulled over more, and this is why we wanted no tension on the needle, so we could pull that thread over. And that's why I tightened up my lower looper so it would help pull more to the back side. And then after I'm done that, I can easily tear this all away and then reuse this strip for another project. Or then when it gets really um, very uh, small and I can't even use it, I throw it in a, a little spray bottle and uh, use it as stabilizer. But there, so that's my beautiful blanket stitch. Now I could go back and either pick out that little bit of stabilizer there, or again, spritz it with water and it's gonna completely disappear. So how beautiful is that? Very simple. And now to do the edges, to do the corners, what I do is just run right off each side. So I do one side at a time, run right off, leaving the long thread tail. And then you can thread up, this is a uh, tapestry needle. It's got a really big eye and, and a more blunt point. Uh, conversely, you can use, this is a ball point bodkin you may already have in your tool drawer to like thread lacing and elastic and all that. And then with the big eye, you can put this big uh, chain of serger thread through. So then I would then take this back and thread it through the previous line of uh, stitching. And again, once I remove all that water soluble stabilizer, then um, it'll be more flexible as well. So then I would take that out and then just trim that off nice and even. And again, you'd barely even see it. So it works really, really good. So it's a great exercise if all these decorative threads and all that are new to you, or again, maybe you've had them in your drawer forever. And I wonder, when am I going to use this, uh, this serger blanket stitch scarf was a great opportunity to use some heavier thread in your needle and a more decorative thread in your um, lower looper or um, and in either of your loopers would be great but yes it's a really fun project so yes how did we do was that good i'm sorry i haven't been atta uh, paying attention to questions at all but uh, um yes oh yes oh excellent thank you oh cheryl dobo excellent it's great to see you thank you oh this is wonderful thank you Yes. Uh, so yes, I found the, the scarves were a great project to learn. Oh, Glenn, hello. Yes. Oh, yes. Convincing of the air thread serger. It didn't take me much convincing. Oh, I must tell you all before I say goodbye. When Janome debuted or was about to debut this air thread serger, um, all of us from Janome Canada flew to, uh, at that time, we had an office in Vancouver and we all went out there and this was all under wraps. Literally, it was all under like sheets. 
And then when we went in to see, ta-da, this is what Janome's coming out with, oh, we screamed like four-year-old girls. Or at least some of us screamed like four-year-old girls. It was amazing. So it was like, oh, I was so excited that Janome got this amazing surgery. Now, all Janome surgeries are great. I've had one for about ooh, 25 years. Uh, but this, again, you can't beat it. So it's great. Um, yes. Marie Louise asked, which tension is in your lower looper? So right now I have it at six. Normally when I do this uh, serger blanket stitch or always, regardless of what thread or what technique I'm going to do, I'm always going to start with my uh, average tension is about three. Uh, for most, uh, there's even like these little uh, notches here, these little indicators. It's somewhere between uh, two and four three being in the middle. So I will always start at three. And then I do my little test surge and see, oh, how does it look? Um, is it the way that I want? And then if not, then I start playing around. So typically when I do this serger blanket stitch, I leave the lower looper at three. But when I did it with this blue glamour, uh, in particular, I found it looked a little better. It wrapped a little more to the back if I increased that tension if I turned it up. So it normally is at three and then I turned it up to six and gave my little sample and went, okay, that's fine. That uh, it's, it's the look I wanted. If I felt, oh no, that was too much, then great. I back it off or to think, oh, maybe six wasn't enough. Then I can increase it all the way up to nine. So you just play around with it and find out what works for you based on what thread you have and what fabric you have. But yes, thank you. So thank you all very much for joining me today. Have a wonderful weekend. I will be back uh, doing these Facebook Lives um, in July at some point. Uh, I'm very excited. So yes, thank you all for joining me. Thank you so much for all your wonderful support. And Joe, my cameraman, <laughs> thanks you all again too. So yes, enjoy your wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Bye.